Dearest teachers, good day! This is Ron Ray Portacion, your partner in learning resource development. For today, we're having our orientation on the development of self-instructional material and learning activity sheets. The development of self-instructional material is a division initiative of the Division of Misamis Occidental. This project aims to develop learning resource materials for learners as their partner in learning independently of this pandemic situation. This material is designed to help learners master the identified most essential learning competencies of the Department of Education. The materials shall be given to the learners to help them master a competency-based skill given the learning modality of the new normal situation. It is designed with activities requiring minimal intervention and guidance of a teacher or a responsible adult at home. The 28 self-instructional materials shall be developed to cover the most essential learning competencies of a given learning area in a grade level. Then, the instruction shall be supplemented with the learning activity sheets for 10 days to intervene, reinforce, and enrich learning. Two days will be allotted for quarterly examination, which marks as the culmination of the rating period. The development of self-instructional materials should adhere to the following instructional principles. First, storytell, do not lecture, which means that storytelling is a very powerful tool to engage the learners to learn. Second, don't just teach, create an experience, which engages the teachers to create an experience for the learners while learning by making the content relevant and context-based. For the structure and sequence, the lessons shall be arranged from simple to complex, which reminds that the exercises shall start from easy and gradually increase in the degree of difficulty. The size of the letters and the length of the sentences shall be appropriate to the target users. This is to facilitate ease in reading and to suit the level of the understanding of the learners. Presentation shall be engaging to capture learners' interest and sustain motivation in learning. Appropriate medium of instruction shall be used in the development of the self-instructional material. The following, Sinubuan ng Binisaya, Filipino, and English shall be used as medium of instruction appropriate to the learning area. The content shall adhere to the most essential learning competencies of the K-12 curriculum. The following pedagogical approaches, namely constructivist, inquiry-based, reflective, collaborative, and integrative shall be used in developing the content. Learners' context, situations, individual needs, and capabilities shall be considered in the development of the material. The materials should be free from ideological prejudices, racial and gender discrimination, and shall adhere to the depth and social content guideline. Most importantly, the, the material shall be learner-centered and shall promote 21st century skills such as critical and creative thinking, problem solving, information literacy, and others. The following elements should be present in the design of the module. First is the front outside cover. The front outside cover shall contain the following, learning resource title, grade level identifier, violator, cover art or photo, and depth end identifier. Here is a sample of a cover. Here, you can notice that the important elements mentioned before are all present. Next is the copyright page. The copyright page contains the resource title, edition and copyright year, the copyright notice and the development team, where the name of the developer, illustrator, and evaluators are found. Next is the title page. The title page contains the grade level identifier, the title of the sim, the table of contents, the name of the developer, position, and school, and an art that relates to the content of the sim. Here is a sample of a title page. The following parts are found in the inside pages. First, the learning objectives. For English, it shall be called Guide Me, while Gabayan Mwako in Filipino and Giyahiko in Bilisaya. This part presents the competency to be developed, an overview of the lesson, and the essential concepts to be learned. Next is the learning activities. In English, it is Let Me Do It, Gagawin Ko in Filipino, and Himuunako in Binisaya. This part provides the activities or tasks 
that the learner shall undertake. There shall be three activities that vary in the degree of difficulty. In terms of the number of items, grade 1 to 3 have three items per activity, while five items per, per activity for grades 4 to 6, and 10 items per activity for grades 7 to 12. The following parts are found in the inside pages. First, the learning objectives. For English, it shall be labeled as guide me, while gabayan mo ako in Filipino and giyahi ko in Binisaya. This part presents the competency to be developed, the overview of the lesson, and the essential concepts to be learned. Next is the learning activities. In English, it is let me do it. Gagawin ko in Filipino and himuon ako in Binisaya. This part provides the activities or tasks that the learner shall undertake. There shall be three activities that vary in the degree of difficulty. In terms of the number of items, grade 1 to 3 shall have three items per activity, while five items per activity for grades 4 to 6, and 10 items per activity for grades 7 to 12. The references provide additional content to the coverage of the textbook. It may also contain lists of references that the learner may refer to for further reading and learning. It will be called Learn More in English, Dagdag Kaalaman in Filipino, and Dugang Pa in Binisaya. And lastly, the answer key, which will be labeled Let Me Check in English, Pastuhin Ko in Filipino, and Insakto Ba in Binisaya. It is very important that the answer key presents all the correct answers and should be free from errors. For the technical specifications, the following should be adhered with in order to achieve uniformity and conformance to the standards. For the page setup, A4 shall be used. It will be in landscape orientation for the kindergarten materials and in portrait orientation for the grades 1 to 12 materials. One inch margin shall be observed in all sides and 1.5 paragraph spacing shall be observed. A template will be given to all developers for ease in layouting and easy adherence to the set standards. In terms of typography, Alphabeto is the recommended font style for the materials from kindergarten to grade 3, while Bookman Old Style shall be used for materials for grades 4 to 12. For font sizes, the following shall be observed. Please refer to the table found on the screen for the detailed recommended font sizes for the body text, headings, and subheadings. And an adherence to the R to text ratio should be observed. You may find out that the materials in the lower grades are highly illustrated compared to those in the upper grades, since they are very dependent to pictures to supplement understanding. The body text shall be aligned left for kindergarten to grade 3, while grades 4 to 12 shall be justified. In placing the page number, it shall be in Arabic numerals, and placed center at the bottom of the page. In citing the references for further readings, the following shall be observed. It is very important to cite properly the resources used in the development of the materials. In referencing books, start with the name, middle initial, last name, title of the book, the publisher, city, the year of publication, and page number. Here is a sample. While in referencing website, it shall start with the title of the material, name of the website, the last date it was modified, the access date, and the URL address. For photographs and images, cite it starting with the first name, middle initial, and last name of the author, title of the image, or title of the blog, date of posting, and the URL address if it's an online material. In partner of our SIM is the development of the learning activity sheets. These are the important parts of the learning activity sheets. First, the learning competency. It is labeled Your Guide in English, Iyong Gabay in Filipino, and Giya Mo in Binisaya. This part presents the partner, week number, activity number, activity title, learning objective, and the reference. The next part is the concept note or a generalization. In English, it is labeled Learn More. In Filipino, Dagdag Kaalaman. In Binisaya, Dugang Pa. This part presents a capsulized note or a summary of important concepts to be learned. And the last part is an exercise or an activity. 
In English, this is labeled try this. In Filipino, subukan mo ito. While in Binisaya, sulayi. This part provides an exercise or activity to help master the competency. Here is a sample of each part of the learning activity sheet. This is the per first part which presents the guide. This is the generalization. And this one is the activity. Here is the development work plan and the development of self-instructional material and the learning activity sheet. This follows this workflow in order to achieve our objective. First, it starts with the planning phase. In the planning phase, we are tasked to develop instructional and technical design of the learning resource to be developed. Then timelines are set in the development activity. Then, writers are identified, including the illustrators, layout artists, the evaluators, and editors. Then, a memorandum was issued in order to officially identify these members of the development team. And today, we are having our orientation. During the orientation, it is very important that we are to discuss the design and technical specification of the learning resource material we are to develop. We will also discuss the evaluation standards to be achieved. Here, you will also be assigned with the topic or the competency to be developed by each writer. Then, writers shall accomplish the following. The writer's and illustrator's profile, the writer's assignment agreement, the illustrator's assignment agreement, then we will set timelines and schedules in the development of the scene. Then, the whole team will accomplish the team work plan. Then, we have the development of manuscript. In the development of manuscript, writers are tasked to write the material to be developed in adherence to the instructional design and technical specifications. Then, it is very important that the material adheres to the social content guidelines. The developer shall prepare the inventory of original contents. Here, the, the writer shall declare all the original materials she or he has developed. Then, if there are third-party contents utilized, it shall be declared in LRC Form 6, or the Inventory of Third-Party Contents. If there are third-party contents used in the development of the material, hence, we are to ask permission using LRC Form 7, or the Performa for seeking permission to copy. And when using photographs with persons as subject, it is very important that we are to request permission by issuing LRC Form 8 or the Model Release Form. After the development of manuscript, each development team shall conduct internal review of the manuscript. During this internal review of the manuscript, language and content editing will be conducted. The same will also be evaluated using the following tools. Evaluation tool for content, Evaluation tool for design and layout. Then, the team shall prepare the summary of findings, corrections, and review. After such internal review of the manuscript, the, the same will be returned to the writers for the revision of manuscript. Here, the, the team shall revise the material, integrating the findings, corrections, and review from the internal review. Then, such material will be submitted to the team leader, the education program supervisor in both hard and soft copy, and files are also should be in Word and PDF files. Then such files will be forwarded to the LRMD center. After the material is submitted to the Curriculum Implementation Division Learning Resource Management section, the team leader or the education program supervisor with the education program supervisor in charge in the Learning Resource Management and Development Center organizes pool of evaluators per learning area. Then, the QA supervisor will orient the QA team with the QA process and the evaluation tool to be utilized. During the evaluation process, the quality assurance team shall conduct the evaluation using the following tools. Evaluation tool for content, evaluation tool for design and layout. The same, the evaluation team shall prepare summary of findings of corrections and review. Then, the results of the review shall be communicated to the development team. If the learning resource passes the LR standards, then it will proceed to finalization. While if failed to pass the learning resource standards, then it will be returned to the, learn to the development team for revision. Here are the timelines we need to observe in the development of the self-instructional module. June 9 and 10 is the schedule for the district rollout. 
we will start with the development of learning resource materials for the core subjects for quarters 1 and 2. The development workshop shall start on June 11 until June 16. The internal review shall follow from June 17 to June 19. The revision of manuscript shall be on June 23 to June 27. The evaluation and quality assurance process shall be on June 30 to July 5, while the finalization of the core subject self-instructional materials for the first and second quarters shall be on July 7 to 11. For the non-core subjects, for the first and second quarters, the development shall start on June 30 to July 5, 2020. The internal review and evaluation shall follow on July 7 to 11, 2020. Then the revision of manuscript shall proceed from July 14 to July 18, 2020. Then the evaluation and quality assurance of this self-instructional module will be on July 21 to July 25, 2020. And finalization will be on July 28 to August 8, 2020. The development and management teams are composed of the following. The chairperson is our school's division superintendent. Dr. Edwin R. Maribohok, CISO 6. The co-chairpersons are Mamaira P. Mibato, the Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, and our Curriculum Implementation Division Chief, Dr. Samuel C. Silacan. Members are Ron Ray M. Portacion, Education Program Supervisor of the Learning Resource and Management Section. For Filipino, we have Lorena R. Simbahon, Education Program Supervisor, with Marilyn C. Panonchalman, the PSDS, and Maria Chirel T. Samonte, Principal 3. For English, we have Ma'am Jawanet Clarpandel M. Caparas, the Education Program Supervisor for English, and Ma'am Loida A. Entong, Principal 2, and District in Charge of Calamba District. For Mathematics, the team is composed of Sir Ernie J. Kagindangan, Education Program Supervisor. Partner with Leia G. Senos, the Public Schools District Supervisor, with Ma'am Tita Pita L. Bago, Principal 3 and District in Charge, and Ma'am Marion G. Roa, Principal 2 of Aloran Central School. For Science, Marites A. Kagindangan, Education Program Supervisor, spearheads the team, with the assistance of Nelia T. Lanzaderas, Principal 3, and Asela I. Ilumbaring, Public Schools District Supervisor. For MAPE, Patria Gloria P. M. Iman, Education Program Supervisor, with Susan A. Baco, the Public Schools District Supervisor, with the assistance of Jonideth G. Catalon, Principal 2, and Fernand C. Lanzaderas, Education Program Specialist. For Education sa Pagpapakatao, it is headed by Ray D. Tabel, Education Program Supervisor, with Edna Alona B. Dohay Longsod, Principal 2, and Mylene G. Labastilla, another Principal 2, both district in charge. For Araling Panlipunan, we have Sir Eliazar L. Tamparo, Education Program Supervisor, with the assistance of Berlin and Q. Fermo, the Public Schools District Supervisor. For TLE, we have Joseph T. Bunyao, Education Program Supervisor, with the assistance of Edwin V. Palma, the Public Schools District Supervisor, and Ray G. Salcedo, Principal 2, and Avilia G. Taclo, Principal 2. Both are district in charge. For MTB and Kindergarten, it is headed by Maurita B. Barquez, the Education Program Supervisor, and Losminda G. Taktakon, the Public Schools District Supervisor. The task might be very challenging, but let's look at things with positivity and optimism. Let's remember that what we are doing is para sa bata, para sa bayan. Good luck everyone and God bless. Thank you very much.